Hi, in this video I'm going to walk you through some of the business concepts that come up in the module Create Reports and Dashboards for Sales and Marketing Managers. Some of these concepts will, I hope, make you more prepared to complete the Lightning Experience Reports and Dashboards Specialist Super Badge a little bit easier because that Reports and Dashboards is really about knowing what's important to executives, how executives think, and I want to spend a little bit more time and give it a little bit more detailed treatment than Trailhead does here, just to because really thinking like an executive is just it's a different set of muscles than most of us are, are used to. By the way, if you haven't yet, I highly recommend reading the book Trailblazers by Mark Benioff. This is a great way of learning and seeing how executives think about big picture issues. This is all of Mark's thinking about how Salesforce has come to be the company that it is the importance of values, of culture, and you get to see his leadership and thinking through a lot of the big picture issues that impact business. And so I highly, highly recommend it. You can find a link to it in the description below. Also a link to Audible where you could sign up for one free month and listen to the book. And I would actually recommend just keep that subscription and listen to more books and know more stuff because knowing stuff is cool. Okay. This section here says your stakeholders reporting needs. And it goes through what the VP of sales needs to know, what the VP of marketing needs to know, and the CEO. Um, and like <laughs> some of this just misses the mark for me a little bit. Like the CEO has the, needs the ability to export and manipulate a report in a spreadsheet software. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and other stuff. <laughs> Um, so let's talk these through a little bit, okay? So the VP of sales, they need a report showing their teams by opportunity by rep that have closed in and won this year. The reason this is important is because they need to know which teams are producing well, which teams are not producing well, and then start to have conversations with those teams and find out what's going on. And uh, are they selling a different product mix? Are they trying to do discovery in some way that's not as effective? What's happening there? They need to be able to identify those issues and address them. If, of course, if they find a highly productive team, find out why that team was so productive and see if they can include those best practices for the other teams as well. Report showing opportunities by rep, group by close date, and displayed in a table. Understanding, um, you know, most businesses have a quarterly reporting feature, especially at publicly traded companies. And so they have a responsibility of doing the reporting uh, every quarter. Well, you want to make sure that you're closing the business in that quarter so that way as a company you make that number. If for some reason you're, it looks like you're not going to be making that number, you need to make a change and figure out like, what do we need to do to make that number? So maybe that's, we need to give more incentives to the salespeople to sell more of a specific type of a product to direct their focus there. Or maybe we need to do a marketing campaign to get more attention focused on it. A matrix report showing opportunities by owner stage and size and the pipeline for this fiscal quarter. So we should be able to see how things are moving through the company. And you'd also want to start to see like, Hey, do we have a sales rep that's got 10 opportunities? Well, that might be awesome. But what if that somebody has just two or one? Really, if you're working at a great company, they're not going to be like, oh, you're just getting two. What's the problem? Get on it. Ideally, if they just have one or two, they'd be like, well, like, why? What, what's happening? Like, does that sales rep not know something they need to know? Does that sales rep have something happening in their family that the company should know about? Like... What is happening? What's not happening? Like we need to be able to understand that and address it. Report showing percentage of closed opportunities being one. Okay, so what was the close rate? You'd want to understand that close rate. And of course, a high close rate you would think is a good thing. A too high of a close rate is not a good thing because it means you're only talking to people that you're directly interested in, like that are really, really interested in your product. You want to be speaking to a wide enough audience so you're getting the people that are really interested in your product and also some people that just eh, meh, might be interested in your product so that way because some of those met people might be able to become really excited also 
So if, but if you're just speaking to the really excited people, you're going to have a high close rate, which is good, but you're not going to get overall as much sales as you possibly could. So visual comparison of sales rep win rates. So you want to know which sales reps are doing the best and take those best practices and share them with everybody else. And a dashboard displayed key information from her sales reports, which is also accessible by her team. So dashboard is, brings in all of that information into one place so it's easily seeable. Um, okay. The VP of Marketing wants a list of all customer accounts based in Texas, North Carolina, Illinois, and New York that have either a rating of hot or warm or an annual revenue of over $2 million. So this is what they're specifically looking for. The reason they would want something like this is maybe they're doing some sort of campaign in those regions or in those places or something for those size of companies. So that's why they're looking for that type of a report. And the CEO, again, this is a specific scenario that's being built out here, but the overall reason you know, the CEO needs to understand on a macro level, is the sales team producing enough? Is the marketing team producing enough? If the sales, to, you know, as enough um, visitors to the site converting and becoming leads, and then as the sales team taking those leads and making them into opportunities, that's sort of like the big picture question that the CEO is going to be interested in. And so that's sort of important to keep in mind. Okay, if you've got questions on this, there is this follow along with Trail Together, which is pretty cool. And so you could take a look at that. One of the things that's talking about the channel sales team, Eastern sales team and Western sales team, that's breaking up the report by team. So that's why that's important. And um, okay, I think that's enough for this unit. Jumping on to the next unit, create a simple custom report. So just one thing I want to point out in this unit, and that is this, you know, opportunities by rep that you're creating in here. Um, sales reps typically are very competitive and uh, motivated by competition. That's part of, for people who are really into sales, that's partly the appeal of, of it. And so creating a report like this allows that sort of healthy competition between the reps to exist. So there's that and it's important. Sometimes, you know, the person who is the best performer or the top performer will get extra compensation, extra recognition. So that's partly why that's uh, there and important and part of how the sales teams operate. Next unit is filter your reports. One of the things that you sometimes can do with a report like this, let's say central and eastern target accounts, is you could have an event where you invite all of your prospects and put and current customers in together and have a have a session have a meeting talking about the future of innovation and give current customers and prospects a chance to talk to each other and that gives people you know all sorts of opportunities to make new connections and say hey here's a problem we're trying to solve how did you solve it and I mean, that's essentially what Dreamforce is, right? So if you're familiar with that, obviously, probably. Yeah. Uh, but if you're not, if, they, if you're really just starting off with Trailhead and you're not familiar, Dreamforce is Salesforce's annual event. Um, and they have all sorts of experiences like this where they bring customers and prospects together, a chance to talk about technology, the future of business, and sales, Salesforce, basically. But any company could do that. So one of the reasons in the next unit, group and categorize your data, one of the reasons you'd want to group opportunities into small, medium, and large is because different sales reps are usually trained to how to address different size opportunities. Typically, it's the more senior people that deal with the large accounts and the newer people that deal with the smaller accounts. That's typically the way that it sort of works. And also when you get into a larger account, it's usually just more complicated and a lot more moving pieces. So it's really important to have somebody who's really familiar with that space and trained in how to address it. The goal overall as the company, as a sales team, is to give each seller their ideal best career. So while overall the company is looking at a macro level as to how do we achieve all of our numbers, part of the way of doing that is to make sure that properly trained people are addressing the right size customer for their skill set. On the flip side of that, 
if you're hiring salespeople, you want to make sure that they feel comfortable addressing and being successful. So you want to set them up for success. Separating out your accounts by size is a great way of doing that. And just one of the many ways of doing that. Okay, I just want to point out that this description here in use summary formulas in your reports for the sales rep win rates. How well are my sales reps closing? That's like a, you know, as soon as you get the answer to that question, that's then going to spark like a billion more questions. You know, why is one team performing better? Is it overall as a team? Is it their leader? Is it the market, the opportunities that that team is being given? Um, all, you know, all sorts of questions like that are going to have to figure into answering that question. So, but overall, that's the stuff that as executives, that's what they're, they're thinking about the big picture. And as a Salesforce administrator, you're like, well, I'm just making a report in a dashboard. In order to really make reports and dashboards well, you've got to get into the head of this executive leadership so you can anticipate what are the questions that they're going to want to know and try to try to address them. And, and that's very and especially as you're starting off in business, it's very hard to do. It's a very it's a very difficult thing to do. Reading books, reading magazine articles, thinking this through, you know, it's listening to other people. It's all podcasts, all part of that process of like building that skill of thinking at like an executive and how then using your technical know how can you help them be successful? Okay, this section here, manage reported data, <laughs> export a report as a CSV. This sort of glosses over one of the secrets a little bit. Um, that's sort of an open secret, which is that, uh, you know, if you want to know which users have not logged in, in the last seven days, that's because typically salespeople don't really like using a CRM because it, they feel like it slows them down. If they're dealing with a large number of accounts, then they'll want to use the CRM because that's the only way they're able to stay organized. But if that's not the case, you know, some salespeople managed all of their sales just on a pad of paper. And so having to enter everything into Salesforce, they just feel they feel like it's slowing them down. Now, it's incredibly important that they enter in probably at least four or five fields. So that way the business overall can make the right decisions and the right strategy. Doing this report will help identify those people who haven't been doing their part. And um, that's that's sort of the, the goal of that report. Obviously, things in dashboards look nicer and are easier to use. And that's the and key part there of visualize your data. Do not be surprised if after you put together a report and a dashboard and you show it to your manager and they show it to the sales leadership or the marketing leadership, they're like, well, we want to know. And then like 16 more things. So anticipate that happening and um, look hopefully this sort of overview of what some of the stuff actually is like in real life has been helpful for you my hope is is that it will help you prepare for the lightning experience report and dashboard specialist super badge and expand your thinking about how reports and dashboards fit into the big picture of salesforce in solving real business problems thanks for watching